All right, so what is Islam? Islam basically means submission to the will of God. Um, and here we have a verse from the Quran that says, Say truly my prayer and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the cherisher of the world, so no part of my he, this am I commanded, and I am of the first of those who to his will. Um, Muslims basically believe that Allah, you know, is the creator of all things, and we pray for worship him and him alone, and um, everything we do, we say, Bismillah, Rahman, everything we love, in the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful, and um, we completely submit ourselves to God through Islam. And then who is Allah? We have the one, Allah is the one and only God, the same God, prophets, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and Jesus, peace be upon them all spoke of. Um, a lot of people don't really know that, um, you know, Islam is just a continuation of Judaism and of Christianity, and we believe in the prophets of Judaism and Christianity, the prophets that we have listed here. Um, and also, we also, we also believe in, you know, uh, monotheism, and so uh, here we have, he say he is Allah, the one and only, he is the eternal absolute, he gets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like unto him. So I believe that there is only one God. Um, and Allah is the most, it's, it's very specific to the one God in English. You know, you have God, but that can be used to speak of other things besides the God of, you know, Abraham and Jesus and David and Moses. So Allah is very specific to just this one God. Who are Muslims? Um, the Muslim, Muslim means a person who submits to the will of God, Allah. Again, we have the word Allah um, just to kind of emphasize that we're talking about this one specific God. Uh, and here we have, say, O people of the scripture, come to a word that is equitable between us and you, that we will not worship except Allah, and not associate anything with him, and not take one another as lords instead of Allah. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims submitting to him. Oh, and I didn't mention yet, but on the I guess you're on the right. No, 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 you're left. We have um, some of the names of Allah. We have in the Quran, there are 99 um, names or attributes of Allah that basically describe him. And we have the Arabic term and then we have the English term. A lot of people believe that in Islam, God is something to be feared or someone you're supposed to be scared of. But these um, attributes of Allah that we have right here are showing that he's very merciful. He's Know, the most giving, some of the examples we have, yeah, the merciful, the beneficent, um, the pure one, the source of peace, uh, the guardian, you know, things like this showing that God in Islam is not this entity to be feared, and he's very merciful to his people. All right, um, so I'll start describing the five pillars of Islam. Oh. <laughs> Um, the first pillar we have is the Declaration of Faith, or the Shahada. This is something that um, Muslims say during prayer, and it's also something you say um, to declare your faith and to, um, when you convert to Islam, this is something that you say. And it is, I bear witness that there is no de deity worthy of worship except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his prophet and last messenger. In Arabic, you say, Shahada Allah, ooh, I'm going to butcher it, so I'm not even <laughs> My Arabic isn't that good. <laughs> So I don't want to, yeah. Air is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have a law witnesses that there is no deity except him, and so do the angels and those of knowledge that he is maintaining creation and justice. There is no deity except him, the exalted and mighty wise. This is from chapter 3, verse 18 of the Quran. And it's just to emphasize that there is only one God worthy of worship, um, and Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. Prayer. Uh, some of you may know that Muslims pray five times a day. We actually pray according to the rotation of the um, sun, and there are many benefits of prayer. You know, uh, it, here it has. Oh, observe the salat on type prayers where it prohibits evil and vice. Um, and that's from the Quran, chapter 29, verse 45. And that just basically talks about how, um, you know, if you're praying five times a day, you're going to kind of stay away from bad things. You know, you're going to, I don't know, for example, a club or something, you know, before that you have to pray, and then afterwards you're going to be thinking, hmm, you know, is this really, well, not maybe not going to the club, but something, <laughs> something bad. Um, you, you're going to kind of consider, well, okay, I just pray, or I'm going to have to pray at this time. So, you know, is this, Thing really something that I should be doing. So it kind of keeps you focusing on, you know, doing good things and performing good deeds. Um, also, I am God, there's no other
Father God, but me, you shall worship me and observe this law of contact prayers to commemorate me. Um, and that's just kind of talking about, uh, you know, Muslim, us Muslims, we submit our will completely and fully to God. And so um, we pray five times a day to kind of to praise and worship God. And it's also to thank him and show gratitude for all that he does for him. Again, as Muslims, we believe that God is the most merciful, the most um, gracious, most generous in everything that happens to us or everything that, you know, everything comes from God. Everything comes from Allah. So part of us, you know, recognizing that and submitting to his will is showing our gratitude and being humble to him through prayer. All right. Uh, Next we have zakat or alms giving, and this is basically like giving charity. Um, here it says they ask you about giving. Say the charity you give shall go to the parents, the relatives, the orphans, the poor, and the traveling alien. Any good you do, God is fully aware thereof. Um, again, giving charity. Talk. Well, these verses here, I'm not going to read them all because you know they're there. You kind of read. Um, it's just emphasizing, you know, this idea that God is the most merciful, He's the most gracious, and if you do good things, then He, he will be rewarded. Um, in Islam, we believe that we are accountable for our actions, and we believe that, you know, what you give, you will receive. So if you give charity and do good things, then God will, you know, bless you or reward you for that. Another one we have is fasting or sown. I said that correctly, did I? Anyone that speaks Arabic? So, okay, um, and that's just, uh, we fast in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month in which um, the Quran was revealed and we were ordered, or uh, we were asked by the law to fast during that holy month. And here it says, oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become out of the king, the pious. Um, fasting for a fixed number of days, but if any of you is able on the journey, the same number should be made up from other days. Um, and as for those who can fast with difficulty, i.e. an old man, etc., they have a choice either to fast or to feed a poor person for every day. But whoever does good of his own accord, it is better for him, and that you fast, it is better for you if you only know. And again, this is, here we have, you know, God uh, showing his kindness by allowing, you know, by making things easy for people. They don't, he doesn't want to put you in difficulty. That's, Another thing about the misconception of God, you know, being someone to fear or God being, you know, the one that just does nothing but punish. He here is showing his mercy and showing how he doesn't want to put people in difficulty so you're not able to fast. There are, you know, exceptions for that. Also, fasting has its benefits. Um, there are health benefits such as detoxification, um, kind of, you know, letting your digestive system rest. Also, um, fasting during the month of Ramadan is just more than abstaining from food and drink. It's abstaining from you know bad behavior. It's abstaining from you know bad habits. It's a good time to get rid of bad habits because um, I heard that it takes 27 days for a human being to you know kind of break a habit. And so during the month of Ramadan, if you want to break a bad habit, it's a good thing to basically fast from that. And so if you fast for 30 days, so in that 30 days you can kind of break that habit. And, done with it. So that's another benefit of fasting. Um, last we have pilgrimage or hajj. Um, it says, and proclaim that the people shall observe hajj or pilgrimage. They will come to you walking or riding on various exhausted means of transportation. They will come from the farthest locations. Um, and during hajj, it's, there's a lot of things that you do during hajj. I'm going to just give you a very brief um, overview of that. And, um, People make the pilgrimage to Hajj, and when you're going on Hajj, it's supposed to be this spiritual journey, and it's about improving your lives and bettering yourself. A lot of people go on Hajj, and they say, okay, I'm going to go to Hajj, and um, you know, develop my spirituality and come close to God, and then I'm also going to kind of, you know, step back and look at things and look um, at things in perspective and kind of see, okay, these are the things that are wrong with my life, these are the things that I'm doing wrong, and this is how I need to change. And so, a lot of people, um, during Hajj, it's about not only becoming closer to God and praising and worshiping Him, it's also about improving your life and becoming a better person. All right, beliefs. So these are uh, some of the beliefs of Muslims. These are actually like the six um, pillars of Iman, six books of faith. So believe in Allah, believing that He is, there's only one God worthy of worship. So going back to the Shahada, there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Um, belief in the angels, believing that God created angels. Um, belief in the revealed books, so a 
um, Islam isn't something that's completely separate from Christianity and Judaism. It's actually something that was here when Abraham was first here and all the other prophets came down. It's just a continuation of that. And uh, part of uh, is, or our belief is that uh, is believing in the Torah and the Bible that came before the, um, the Quran. Belief in the messengers, peace be upon them all. So again, it goes back to believing that Islam is a continuation of the first monotheistic religions that came beforehand. Um, belief in resurrection and judgment day. So believing that one day you will be held accountable for your actions. Um, and belief in the predestination by law of all things. Um, as Muslims, we believe that God basically um, controls everything that goes on. And so you basically, you always go back to Allah and recognize that things happen because of Him and everything happens by His will. And we always say, inshallah, because we know that Allah is the only person that can really control what's going to happen. So if I say, tomorrow we're going to uh, go to the park, we'll say, yeah, tomorrow let's go to the park, inshallah, or something like that. It's not really a good example, but it's one thing I can come off the top of my head. So it's just kind of recognizing um, that Allah is the one that controls everything. All right, that's the end of my show. Uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce um, the three panelists that we have tonight. We have Sister Najia, Sarah Jane, and Derek. You can all step up here.